I'd like to talk a little bit about the historical significance of the Cicely Saunders archive and that for me really is a story about how it's come to reach the point uh, that it's reached now uh, at King's College London. For me the story goes back to 1995 when I was first beginning to think about uh, the importance of the history of the hospice movement in Britain and uh, I wrote to Cicely, who I'd never met at that time, outlining some of my ideas and a proposal I was going to make to the Wellcome Trust for some funding to uh, really begin to explore what the implications of that history might be, principally through the use of oral history. And uh, she was very, very encouraging uh, at that point, saw the value of what uh, was being suggested uh, and gave uh, me and my colleagues a lot of help in, in taking our ideas forward. What we didn't really uh, expect though was uh, when we started to dig around a little bit and when Cicely rather airily said to us, uh, so go and take a look in the basement, there's some papers there that might be of interest to you, uh, was to find this terrific uh, treasure trove of material, albeit um, in a rather um, unsuitable environment as you can see from this photograph. Um, lots and lots of documents and papers, uh, some of them uh, grouped together uh, in various ways, others jumbled up in, 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 in a, a great mashup. Um, but perhaps most worryingly of all, in a basement which somebody said to us uh, was occasionally prone to flooding uh, in, in the summer months. So um, we set to to try and do something about this. And um, we had the idea of approaching the Halley Stewart Trust, uh, who very kindly gave us some financial support to do uh, what, looking back on it now, was really only an initial uh, archiving uh, process uh, on the papers. And uh, that work was, was undertaken under my supervision by uh, a young archivist, uh, Paul Lydon, who just qualified at that time. Um, this involved removing the papers uh, from St Christopher's and, and taking them to the University of Sheffield where I was based at the time uh, and doing quite a bit of work on them uh, using the, the, the established principles of archivism. Um, it was only a section of Cicely's papers because as she said at the time there were a lot of material that she was still using on a day-to-day -day basis, didn't want to uh, have taken away. So it was mainly the earlier papers that, that went to Sheffield at that time. And uh, these were catalogued into about 60 uh, archive boxes. Um, and I was lucky enough uh, for a number of years after that to, to have them by me, uh, not just at Sheffield, but subsequently at Lancaster University, where on a, an ongoing basis I, I was able to explore them and, and, and do some work uh, on them, often uh, talking very closely with Cicely about uh, the, uh, the potential of all this. What one thing that we began quite early was to look at her publications and um, even now this is a work still not quite completed but we've been building up an annotated bibliography uh, of all of her uh, publications, many of which can be found in the archive uh, and which present a really rich resource for secondary analysis and reflection on Cicely's contribution. Um, this graph here shows a little piece of work that one of my students did where she identified 50 papers uh, across um, over 200 uh, lifetime publications from Sicily that seemed to focus <coughs> in particular on uh, theological and spiritual issues and uh, she was able to identify this theme as a, a very strong one not just at the beginning of Sicily's writing but right through her entire publishing career. Um, if I say that on her CV um, we noticed that there were five or six publications listed for the decade before uh, St Christopher's opened, uh, we've now identified over 60 publications in that period. It gives you an insight into the, the rich uh, resources that uh, are available within the archive and which uh, uh, repay close attention and, and, and uh, analysis. So continuing in that vein, we, we continue to, to, to write a number of papers about the history of, the, of St Christopher's, about Cicely's own contribution, uh, and really becoming more and more uh, enthralled really with the potential of the archive. And of course at that time when Cicely was still alive, uh, there was lots of uh, opportunities to talk to her about the papers and to reflect with her on uh, what they were telling us and what the potential they might have for further study. 
Um, so one of the big ideas that emerged uh, out of that was uh, the, the richness of Cicely's correspondence and her letters. And uh, I, I put to her that um, we could really make a selection of her letters across a long period of time, a uh, 40 or 50 year period, that would, if um, properly selected and presented, uh, itself uh, provide a very interesting narrative of uh, the development of her thinking and of the wider history of hospice, not only in Britain but worldwide. And um, that was something that was uh, published in 2002 by Oxford University Press, uh, the selected letters of Cicely Saunders from 1959 to 99. Um, and which has uh, become really a very important resource for people wanting better to understand Cicely's life and contribution. We also had the idea, and this came from Cicely, of, of pulling together a small number of papers that she'd written that um, involved a kind of biographical reflection on some aspects of her spiritual and, and religious interests. And um, this led to the little book Watch With Me, uh, which just has uh, five chapters in it, uh, as it turns out, each one written in a different decade, um, which we, we published uh, first in 2003, uh, and which has become very, very popular and has uh, gone on to be uh, uh, translated into uh, Italian, Spanish, uh, Portuguese and German, and, and we know of uh, other possible editions that might be coming out in other languages in, in the next few years. Again, stimulated by uh, papers that were being derived and, and identified in the archive. Um, that really made me feel that um, there was something more substantial that could uh, build on the letters uh, and on the, the, little ex the experience with the little book Watch With Me. And I suggested to Cicely that we should make a selection of her most important writings over the longer period of, uh, of her publishing uh, career. And uh, this um, book, which we, we sometimes refer to as Cicely Saunders' Greatest Hits, it wasn't a, a joke that she particularly uh, got, but um, a number of us liked the, uh, the term, um, led, uh, turned into a volume of 44 papers covering the period from 58 to 2004, and with a very strong emphasis on the clinical and, and the scientific dimensions of hospice and palliative care, and containing some really key and important papers that are otherwise very difficult to identify identify, not least her very first publication that uh, appeared in the um, St. Thomas's Hospital Gazette. Um, again, there are some plans for uh, perhaps a sh slightly shorter version of that book to, to appear in the next year or two in Japanese. Um, so in, during Cicely's lifetime, uh, in, in that decade between 1995 and 2005 when she died, we were able to do a lot to safeguard the archive and start to build uh, on its potential and draw attention to it. Um, now in 2015, I think we've reached uh, uh, another very, very important milestone because all of those papers that were left behind at St. Christopher's when we did our initial cataloguing, uh, of course, after Cicely's death in, in 2005, went to King's and this is what Chris has been working on uh, in the last year, uh, consolidating those, cataloguing those and integrating them with the work that we'd done previously. So we now have this terrific resource of over 200 archive boxes uh, at King's that uh, really provide a marvellous uh, opportunity for scholarship and reflection on the life, work and contribution of Cicely Saunders. Um, and I think that probably there, there are other things that um, uh, we, we should also take into account. We, we re could regard this as the, the core archive and it's uh, essentially the archive of Cicely's own papers and work. Um, but beyond that, there are other things that we could continue to pay attention to. Cicely was interviewed very many times uh, on film, uh, in audio and uh, in, in the print media. I think there's quite a bit of work to be done there in, in gathering together um, the uh, interviews that were done with Cicely over many, many years and trying to uh, somehow catalogue those and make them available uh, uh, to other people. Um, likewise, a huge amount has been written about Cicely Saunders, not just by academics, but you know, principally by journalists and other commentators. Uh, there is, of course, the Daboulet 
biography, uh, which is uh, another important aspect of this. But there are many, many other writings about Sicily, and some of those are, are rather difficult to identify. They've uh, found in student dissertations and projects. It would be good to see more work done on that to try and catalogue those and, and bring them together, linked presumably virtually to the archive at King's. So where next from my point of view? Well, with my colleague Katrina Forrest, um, we've been exploring the idea of uh, uh, making a short film about uh, Sicily's life, and uh, Katrina's uh, got underway with that uh, activity already. Um, I'm fortunate enough to next year have a period of sabbatical leave when I'm planning to start in earnest on uh, a new biography of Sicily uh, based on my work and understanding and knowledge that's been gained from the, the, the archive and all of these other sources around Sicily and a lot of time spent with her in the last uh, few years of her life recording interviews uh, with a, a posthumous biography in mind. And my hope is that this will uh, really complete the trilogy of the volume of letters, the volume of selected writings uh, and the new biography which would be uh, hope and, 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 and think a, a kind of handsome collection of work that would uh, really help us to consolidate uh, our understanding of Sicily's life. But really the archive now opens up a whole new door for uh, other scholars, other students, other people working in the field of hospice and palliative care to better understand the important work of Sicily uh, and to enable us to go on uh, acknowledging and exploring uh, that contribution and making a connection between that uh, and the current challenges that the field of palliative care is facing. Thank you very much.